In this video, we create a countdown timer that plays during our game. We talk about how we can run the functionality inside of our game mode and expose the remaining time inside of our game state so that it is publicly available to other players and how to create a system where we can count down in intervals and uh, create a widget for that and display it inside of our game while we play. So now I wanna create a timer that will count down while we play our game and when it reaches zero, I want to plug in to be able to uh, do like a lose event or something. I was looking for a lot of solutions on the best way that I wanted to do it. I decided to take something that I found. I want to show you the forum thread for it. I'm going to modify it some to make it do what I want, but uh, a lot of the logic will be kind of similar. So I just wanted to point you to that if you want to see where it originated from. But we're going to talk through the concepts as we go. So let's do it. As always, we want to think about where should our timer exist? Now, I think that if eventually maybe we had multiple players inside of our game mode, we want to think about the proper structure. And so something that is related to the game mode, so something like a public piece of information, like remaining time or what round we're on or the number of players, that kind of thing, we want to be game wide, but we want it to be publicly available to all the players meaning that we might want to use something called the game state. Now, if it is private, like we don't want players to know about it, we can put it in the game mode. Now, I do want other players to see the remaining time. So we're going to build a system that uses the game state, but we'll handle the logic inside of the game mode. So first thing is I'm going to create a new blueprint class, and this is going to be a type of game state. So if I type in game state, you can see game state base and game state. Now, this is a more specific version of game state base. I'm going to go with the simpler one because I don't think I need the extra stuff. But if you did, you could always change that later. I'm going to do game state base and we're going to select this one. We'll call this ball game state. We have a couple of these, so it's important to be very specific and not get confused here. We'll hit control S to save. And remember, our ball game state is going to hold publicly available information that all players should know about that is game wide. Right. So not like individual player stuff like collectible count but maybe the overall score or something we might consider for this. For me, I want the remaining time to be one of the things that all the players can see. So I'm going to open up my ball game state and I'll tell you what, I'm going to close out some of these other ones real quick. Okay, and so inside of our ball game state, I'm going to make a new variable. We'll call this remaining time. And this is going to be a type of float. Okay, and I think that's all I really need. Um, I'm just going to hold on to this remaining time and I'm going to set it from the game mode. So that other things can access it and see it. So I'm going to come out of here. Now the next thing we need is because we made a new part of our gameplay framework, I need to set it inside the game mode. So we're going to double click that. We're going to come back into, if I click on ball game mode self, you can see all of our top level objects. Uh, we've been changing a lot of these so far and we need to change the game state class. So instead of the, the base, we want to set it to the ball game state. Compile save. So now that that's set, um, you'll probably see that if I hit play, it'll spawn our, our ball game state right here. That's what we want. All right, so we're set. Now I'm going to open up my game mode. Um, I'm going to put this inside of my event graph. There are other places you could put this, but I think this makes it the most sense for me right now. Again, I could always change it later if I want. Move some of this out of the way. All right, and begin play. Well, the first thing is I think for a timer, I'm going to be accessing the game state a lot. And so I think it makes sense to hold on to the reference, like get the game state once, hold on to it and change it that way. Uh, there's pros and cons to that, casting frequently versus caching it early, but risking maybe that reference might change at some point. I don't think the game state is gonna change during the game. So I think it's fairly safe to grab it at the beginning, um, but you could always just grab it as you need later on, but I just don't wanna cast it frequently. So I'm gonna do it this way. That's kind of the pros and cons. I'm going to right click and get game state. This is the one that we just defined in our game mode. And I'm going to cast to the specific ball game state that we made. Bring it up, pull that in. And all I'm going to do is right click this as ball game state and I'm going to promote the variable. So this is going to create a variable and set this into it. I'm going to relabel this to make it more clear. Get rid of the as, get rid of the spaces and call this ball game state ref like that. Hit enter. All right. So now if we ever wanted to, we could pull off of this get and we can access the remaining time, right? We can get remaining time. This will just prevent the casting later on and just make it a little bit easier to work with. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to remove event tick and create a custom event for start game. So add custom event. We'll call this start game. 
zoom in. This will be our entry point, And we're going to, after we set this reference, we're just going to call that start game like that. So we're going to start the game. Okay. So when the game starts, that's when we're going to start putting all of our logic. So the way that I'm going to do this, when I count down, I'm going to count down at an interval, meaning that if we want to count down once every second, we'll go one, we'll wait, we'll count it down again, we'll wait. And so the interval in which we wait, we're going to set with a timer. So what I mean by this is if I pull off of start game and I type set timer by event. So what this is going to do is every time we wait, whatever amount of time we put in here, like if it's one second, then we are going to call an event. So we're going to call that event every one second. But what we want to define first is our interval. So if I right click over here and I type promote to variable, you see it's going to automatically make a variable out of that. It's calling it time. I don't really like that. I'm going to call this time interval. We'll keep that as a float. We're going to compile, save and put that at one second. Now this way, if you wanted to change it, like if you wanted to count by 0.1 second, you could. We just need to also make sure that this is checked at looping. So we're gonna wait for whatever the interval is, like one second, and then we're gonna run the event. And then because it's looping, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna run the event, loop, do it again, loop, do it again. So every one second, it will tell it to update the time, and which is what we're gonna do next. So uh, let's go ahead and make that event. We'll say add custom event, call this update time, put that there. And I'm going to connect this red uh, block into that. So every one second, which is what we have right here, or every interval that you set, it's going to call this event and then loop again. So we're going to put that on hold. The next thing we want to do is we want to run some additional code and I want to set the starting time. So what is, if I'm counting down from 60, I want to set some variable to 60 so that I can count it down. So I need to set that first. But another thing I want is I want the ability to access this timer later on. Like I want to hold on to it so that I can pause it. I can reset it. I can do whatever I want. But if I want to do that, I need to hold on to something called the handle of the timer. See this, if I hover over its timer handle structure, if I right click this and promote this to variable, you'll see it'll set it right there. That's a bad name. A new, new var doesn't tell me anything. So let's select that F2 and relabel it remaining time handle. There we go. So we are holding onto our handle, but the other thing is we need to set our starting time. So the way that we're going to handle this is we're going to have some kind of of countdown variable that we need to uh, hold on to some kind of value, like our current time. Uh, we'll call it remaining time, I think. So let's go ahead and make that. Call this remaining time, the type of float. And once we have this created, I'm going to drag this in, set remaining time, pull it in, and I can give it a value right here. Now I could put in the value like 60 or whatever, or I could make this a variable if I want the ability to change it more easily. I think I'm going to make it a variable. So let's make another one. We'll call this game duration. So this is how long I want my timer to be if it's 60 seconds. So this game duration, let's compile, save, and we're going to turn this to whatever we wanted our game duration to be. So 60 is a good default. So instead of hard coding it right here, I'm just going to pull in this new one and say, use whatever value is in our game duration. Okay, so anytime we are setting the remaining time, we need to also update our game state. Remember our ball game state over here with our remaining time? Our game mode is going to pass in the current remaining time and set that value inside of our game state as well. So it's a little bit confusing. We have an internal value that we're using to track the remaining time and then also an external one that we're setting in the game state. We probably don't need both, but I'm gonna do it just so that I can handle it very safely uh, right here. So let's get a reference to our ball game state and drag it in like that. And once we have our reference, we'll drag off type set remaining time. Okay, so we're setting it locally and then we're setting it inside of our ball game state. And it's the same value, so we're just going to plug that right in. Okay, so at this point, other things can ask for the game state for the remaining time. Now again, this is all internal. We, other players are not going to see what's inside the game mode. They will see the game state, so we want to make sure that anything that we want to expose outwards for other things to see, we want to make sure that we set it inside there. So now that we have our defaults, I would just double check uh, our default value. So one second time interval, just make sure it's not zero or else something bad will happen. 60 seconds on game duration, and then this all is fine. Now we need to actually update the time. So to do that, we're going to uh, need to set a new value. So basically our time interval is going to wait one second, and then we're going to count down. 
So to count down, we're going to take our remaining time. So I'm going to get that. And we also need to set the remaining time to something new. So we're going to drag it in again and say set. So when we update our time, we're going to set the remaining time to be equal to remaining time minus our interval. So if we've only counted down for 0.1 second, we only want to subtract 0.1 second from our remaining time. So basically we just get our remaining time, drag off, say minus, just subtract, get our time interval. So we're taking our remaining time, starts off at 60, subtract our interval. Every time we wait our interval, we're gonna get that and plug the result into our set. So we're setting it to a new value after we subtract it. Okay, in addition, we need to set our um, remaining time inside of our game state reference as well. Remember the public available remaining time. So get our ball game state reference, pull off, they set remaining time. I set this one too, pull that in. Pull that in. The last thing we need to do is check to see if we need to keep counting or not. So if we, let's actually print this right here. Just for uh, debugging purposes. And then once we set that, we're gonna come over here. We're going to branch. We're gonna say if our current remaining time is less than or equal to zero, then we wanna stop. So let's take our remaining time. We'll get it. We're gonna pull off of that and say less than or equal to zero right so if we've counted down and it's either zero or below zero then we want to stop okay i'll bring that over here so in order to pause the timer once we are done counting we are going to get our remaining time handle and drag that in say get and from that remember this is referencing our timer that's going over here i'm going to pull off of this and say pause timer by handle so once it reaches zero or below, we're just gonna pause it in case you wanna keep displaying it at zero or something. And we can connect it in. Now I'm gonna make one little adjustment here though. In the case that what if we pause the game or we, we just wanna pause the timer for other reasons, then we may want the ability to pause it from outside of the game mode, right? Just pause the game mode time or something. So I'm gonna make a, uh, another custom event and we're just gonna reuse this event right here. We'll call this pause time and hold alt, click that, disconnect it. And instead, I'm just going to call pause time, which is this one right here. I'll bring this down, plug it in there. Okay, there we go. And if this is true, it means also that we lose. So we're gonna print string for lose like that. All right, so uh, one thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna change the game duration to something like five seconds so that we can test this. But right now it should be printing, right? It should be printing every time we update our time. And then when we lose, it will pause the timer. But at that point, it'll stop printing anyway, so shouldn't really see it. All right, let's come back in here and play. Let's see, four, three, two, one, lose. There we go, great. All right, now all we need to do is display it inside of the UI. So we're going to create a widget. We're gonna customize it and we're gonna bind that countdown data to our game state remaining time. So let's go down to our UI. We're gonna right click and do user interface, widget blueprint, user widget, WBP underscore countdown. Control S to save, open it up. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add our canvas panel. Drag that down. Uh, then I'm going to add text, drag in our text. Let's relabel this countdown. And I'm going to uh, re-anchor this. I think I'm gonna put this in the center, but closer to the top. So let's do top center. And uh, let's do our position X is 0 0.5. We'll just do that like that, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Alignment, this is my pivot center. So it's kind of perfectly centered up there. Uh, but now I'm gonna pull it down. So I'm at position Y, I'm probably gonna pull it down like that. Oh, uh, actually I did this wrong. I'm going to take my position X and zero that out. Now we're gonna pull this down hundred. Okay, that's what I want. And I'm going to justify my text into the center like that. So we have our text block, uh, we can make that bigger, resize it and then just fix it. Here we'll go zero, hundred. All right, size, let's put that to the nearest big number, 250, I think that's pretty good. We're also going to change the font size. Let's make that a little bigger. I think 50. Okay, we'll pull that up. 
All right, I think this is fine for now. We're gonna compile save. Now, before we bind our data, I'm gonna do something. Because we need to access the uh, the game state, I don't wanna cast that frequently or just like search for it all the time. So I'm gonna search for it once at the very beginning. I'm gonna to go to my graph over here in the top right and inside of construct. Now again, there, there's pros and cons to doing this, but uh, I think it's fine because the game state is not gonna change frequently. So it's fine for my purposes. In event construct, let's get game state. Let's pull off of that. We're gonna cast to ball game state, pull off of that, and we're gonna right click our as ball game state and we're going to promote the variable. So this is just gonna save this reference inside of my variable so I can find it later. I'm going to rename this, get rid of the as, get rid of the spaces and add ref at the end. So now, because I've created a variable out of this, I can come back to my designer. I can select my text. I can bind it like this, create binding. This will create my little getter over here. And now if I drag off of my ball game state ref, what it wants to know is what is the value do you want me to put right here? And I want this to be my remaining time. So if I come back over here, if I drag off of ball game state ref and say remaining, get remaining time. And if I pull that into my return value right there, it's gonna convert it to text since it's a number, not text. And you could format this in other ways. Like obviously you can make this a lot more presentable and polished and whatever, but this will work for now. Like this is a good starting point to prove our functionality. If I plug that in, this should be updating correctly, but the problem is I'm never creating the widget inside of my game yet. So I still need to spawn the widget and attach it to my player controller. I think this will be the last step. So if I go to my player controller and um, for my countdown, I think I'm gonna do this in begin play. So after, my mapping context right here instead of player controller. I'm going to drag off whatever the previous node is and begin play. For you it could be something else and that's fine. Create widget. Okay, and we're gonna say our class is our WBP underscore countdown and our owning player, we're just gonna drag off and type in self, get a reference to self. And we spawn it, but now we actually need to render it to the viewport, so let's assign it. We'll drag off of return value. Once we create it, we're going to assign it to the viewport. So add to viewport, compile, save, and we've spawned it, we've added it, we've bound it, and it should all be fine now. I think I'm just gonna go into my uh, game mode, see if we're true, pause time, and then lose. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this print string right here because we don't need it anymore. Plug that in, move it up. I think we should be good. Let's test it out. Compile, save, and play. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. There we go. And we get the lose uh, debug. Now creating an actual functional lose is more complicated. We're not really worried about that for this uh, mechanic. We can very easily just call a function right here if we need to. But for the countdown part, I think this is what I want. So again, um, this is a solution that I, I showed earlier from that forum post, but I wanted to explain all the steps in it and how we can arrive to that solution and why we're using the nodes that we're using. So I think this is a good basic setup for exposing our remaining time to our game state so that we can get a countdown inside of our game. And uh, one last thing real quick before we stop this video, let's make sure to go back to our game duration and turn this back to a more reasonable value, just depending on your level. And for me, it's something like 60 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever. But for testing, I had it lower. Just make sure to turn that back before you uh, call this mechanic complete. So compile, save, and uh, that should be it.